With the rapid ups and downs, it's easy to get market whiplash. Much of the price action with the market right now is dominated by the Federal Reserve and expectations surrounding whether or not the U.S. Central Bank is going to stop hiking rates and continue its aggressive rate hike cycle. Sam, it's a question of will the Fed pivot or won't they? Absolutely. You have the UN calling advanced economies to stop hiking rates while the Fed has come out and said that it's not going to until it sees meaningful progress with inflation. Research analyst Sam Blumenfeld is focused on investments able to endure wild swings. He works closely on Sean Broderick's trading services, Wealth Megatrends and Supercycle Investor. If you have the Fed continue hiking rates, it will likely drive the U.S. economy into a recession. And in the event of a a recession, it helps to position in sectors that have relatively inelastic demand because when consumers are less price sensitive for goods, they will still continue buying them. Demand will stay resilient even when economic conditions worsen. Price inelasticity of demand is a reading that shows how demand for a certain good or service changes if the price changes. Typically, demand goes down when the prices go up, but that doesn't apply to everything. Overall, investors can find opportunities right now. Sure. Two sectors that could outperform or continue outperforming are consumer staples and healthcare, both of which are down less than half of what the S&P 500 is year to date. Here's an ETF in the consumer staples category with a dividend yield of 2.66% at current prices or $1.81 per share. The Consumer Staples Select Sector SPDR Fund, which holds consumer staples companies by their market cap weighting. It holds General Mills, which has a Y safety rating of B+, a recommendation to buy. In Wealth Megatrends, investors saw a 17% gain in their position with GIS over just four months. So when you have an economy that could be worsening, then it helps to position yourself with companies that produce goods that won't see their demand falter when economic conditions are more uncertain. In the healthcare space, there's the healthcare sector SPDR fund, which offers healthcare exposure through the S&P 500. It leans heavily toward large cap stocks in pharmaceuticals, healthcare equipment, healthcare tech industries, biotech, and healthcare providers. If you're looking for individual exposure as opposed to the entire sector, you can drill down and look into the ETF's top holdings. From those top holdings, you can sort them by market cap weighting or potential dividend yield. Dividend payers and dividend raisers have outperformed over the long term. And when you have a company that's paying dividends, it's almost always generating stable cash flows to reward investors. Rate hikes or not, you can expect market action to intensify after the midterm elections. Historically, midterm election cycles are very bullish for the stock market. Take a look at the average returns of the S&P 500 over decades. Six months after the midterms, the average return is 16.1%. One year later, it's 18.6%. And two years later, the average return is about 33.7%. Sam says in this climate, though, nothing is a given. Historically, a split government has resulted in the best performance over the long term. But obviously, the macroeconomic conditions under those rallies were different. And this is a different period in history. And past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Proving that time in the market beats timing the market. Research analyst Sam Blumenfeld, it is always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for your time and insights today. Thanks, Jessica.